Welcome everybody to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Colin McEwen. In today's show, we're fly fishing for a species I absolutely love to try and catch on a fly, big muskie. We're at Rowan Lake in Nielsen's Fly and Lodge, and this is an incredible place. It's a place I've wanted to go all my life. The muskie here are huge, 45, 50, 55, even 60 inches, and you can catch them on a fly. We'll talk about tackle techniques and how you can catch big muskie. Stay with us. Let him go back to live another day. And away he goes. Great fish. Wow. Oh, baby. Look at that fish. Stop, wiggle, on the way down. The new Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Algoma Kinawabi Travel Association, Ontario Tourism, Islander Precision Reels, and Orvis Sporting Traditions. On today's show, I'm in Ontario's beautiful North Country, visiting Nielsen's Fly and Lodge on Rowan Lake. Joining me today is Don Persh, muskie maniac and owner of Nielsen's. Don will be spin fishing while I use a fly rod for these big muskie. The lake boasts excellent fishing for lake trout, northern pike, walleye, and largemouth bass. Many largemouth in the six pound range have been taken. But what Rowan Lake is famous for is its huge muskie. Many avid muskie fishermen believe that the lake holds some of the biggest and heaviest fish in the world. Having a 60 inch muskie follow your offering to the side of the boat is not uncommon. Muskie are the top predator in the lake and they have no fear, even of your boat. It's very common for the fish to fall right to the side of the boat and then take your bait. Watch as Don instructs me on performing the circle technique, which is meant to entice the fish to eat the fly. So one of the things, Don, and, and the people at home, a lot of people don't know what to do with a fly rod when you have a big muskie follow in. I know everybody knows the traditional figure eight using big muskie rods, but how do you do it with a fly rod when we see those big fish coming in? What do you want me to do? What I'd like you to do is, is to give that big fish enough room to maneuver. And that is getting as close to the fly about this far from the end of your rod tip. And, and when you bring her in here, extend your arm out and make a big circle with this fly. If you make too tight a turn, they can't make the turn and they're going, where did that fly go? I really wanted it, but where did it go? So if you give them room to maneuver mm -hmm. in a big circle, when you come out of this circle like this, they cut that angle off and they eat it right there. And all you have to do is stand up on the rod. Okay, so I've got to bring it in a bit when I do this, right? right. Bring it all the way in. Right, if you, have, if you leave too much line out, Colin, you, you won't be able to make the circle. The fly is not following where your rod tip is going. The rod tip's making a circle, but the fly is basically settling in the middle of the circle. Yeah. And it's your aggressiveness um, and knowing what to do when that four is behind your fly. Okay, great. We took a moment to speak with some of the guests at the lodge. They helped me to understand the addiction known as muskie fishing. Because they're very challenging. I mean, every other fish I've gone out and I've been successful and been able to catch with consistency and muskies every day, it's something different. You have to adjust to the conditions, whether it's uh, the cold front or the wind or the rain. You always have to be changing your baits and changing your technique. I think that uh, because it's such a different experience from a fishing standpoint, um, if you're in and the bass are biting, they're gonna hit. Uh, if you're fishing for just about anything else, they either hit or they don't. They don't come up to the boat a foot from you, you know, a four foot, 50 inch, 52 inch fish, and circle around in the water right in front of you. And once you see that a few times, more often than not, I've seen people get hooked. Colin, I'm having you casting over the back of the boat right here. We're moving in a forward direction with the electric trolling motor. And 
that enables you with the boat moving forward to get your fly closer to the end of the rod so you can do that big circle. If you were casting ahead of the boat and we were just drifting along, you would try and bring the fly along the side of the boat, but it would die because we weren't moving forward. You have to keep the fly moving. Okay, so the key is what we're doing is you have me parallel, but cast up slightly, and at the same time as I'm retrieving, you're moving the boat, so we're always getting an action on the fly. You're right. Okay, and then I'm always watching. Of course, we have to be totally visual with this because we're looking for that follow. An important aspect of this, Colin, is like you say, we're sight fishing. We're watching for that fish to follow. Now, whether you're traditional musky fishing or this fly fishing, you're not actually watching the fly. You're watching that four or five feet of water behind the fly. Train your eye not to watch the fly, but train your eye that four or five feet behind the fly because that's where you're going to see this big brown thing moving. And you're going to see her um, almost a three-quarter cast away from the boat and you know she's coming and um, anything can happen at that time. Right there. Just drifted off. What did she do? She was way behind the fly and uh, didn't pay any attention when I started the, the, uh, the circle. Just slowly, didn't scare off, just slowly went away. Yeah. Good job, good job. I, I did not see the fish, but good job. A musculunge, also known as a muskie, is a large, relatively uncommon freshwater fish of North America. The muskie is the largest member of the pike family. Like other pikes, the body design is typical of ambush predators with an elongated body, flat head and dorsal, pelvic and anal fins set far back on the body. Muskie attain lengths of 60 to 150 centimeters or 2 to 4.9 feet and weights of over 30 kilograms or 66 pounds. The fish are a light silver, brown, or green with dark vertical stripes on the flank, which may tend to break up into spots. In some cases, markings may be absent altogether, especially in fish from turbid waters. Don, this is one of the problems you've got here, right? There's lots of them. Largemouth bass, just a little guy, I know, but you've got lots and lots of these. But we're musky fishing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and how big do the largemouth get in here? Oh, six and a quarter pounds was the biggest one last year. But your average, like three pounds? Yeah, very nice average. This is all bait. <laughs> Don, can you explain to me what are the different seasons for the muskie here and you know, the type of food and structure they relate to at different times of the year? Well, in, in the springtime on the opener, and it doesn't open until the third Saturday of June, um, it's all about warm water. They want to feel warm water. So actually depth doesn't mean as much as it does in the month of August in midsummer. It's all about them feeling comfortable and they're in relatively shallow water, new weed growth, and uh, just, just feeling the warmth. And you're using a very small fly, catch a lot of big fish with small baits in the springtime. And it's in shallow bays, like right now, we're, we're basically sight fishing them. The fish you just had up, we saw the fish coming uh, on the fly. So in the month of August, which is absolute prime time when the weed beds become fully mature, they're, they're relating to very deep weed lines. Uh, cabbage beds here in the lake, yeah, 20 plus feet of water. It's very clear water. In the month of September, those weed beds die off and they move to the rocks. And it's much more difficult for musky anglers because there is 100 times more rock than there is weed here in the Canadian Shield. One of these guys is going to get eaten. Oh, it's a little pike. Oh, they got musky on them. Musky with him? Yep, it's Probably. not a big musky, it's just a little musky. 
Well, he might grab the pike. Oh, he's off. Oh, where'd that muskie go? So this is uh, one of the common things that Don tells me happens here is you catch a little pike and as you're bringing it in, same as the large one with bass, the muskie will come and gone. Eat it. The other thing too is, is that the reason that there are so many, so many fish here and so many big fish is because you can't put your own boat in here, you know? The only way to get here is by float plane. So the pressure on these fish is, is almost zero um, and they're allowed to grow to their potential. One of the challenges you have is with the wind. I don't know if it shows on camera, we're getting a lot of gusts right now and we're casting fairly wind resistant flies. That's where you have to use a 10 weight and one of these specially designed musky and pike fly lines. They're really perfect for this. Get your fly in here. There he is. I got my fly right here. No, big corners. Let her come up on it and take it away from her. Okay. So see him. Your aggressiveness is what's gonna turn her on. Spooked. Muskie prefer clear waters where they can lurk along weed edges, rock outcrops, or other structures to rest and ambush. The muskie follow two distinct home ranges in summer, shallow water range and a deep water one. Changes in food and cover, as well as temperature, affect movement patterns. Preferred summer temperatures are in the 70 degree Fahrenheit range. Muskie are opportunistic predators, feeding on whatever is generally available. Adults eat fish primarily, but occasionally consume small muskrats, ducks, loons, and other surface food. Completely motionless and quite invisible in its normal habitat, it lies in wait for a likely meal to stumble into its kill zone. The flies that we used for muskie were deceivers in red and white, chartreuse, and perch minnows, blue and white clousers, and a fly called the quarter chicken dinner. So Don's got us going around the edges here. And uh, of course there's a chance of seeing a big muskie here, so we've got our rods ready for that. But Don, can you explain to me a little bit about uh, the largemouth bass here in Rowan Lake? Because it really is an underutilized resource, isn't it? It's pretty unusual to have this type of largemouth bass fishing in Northwest Ontario. And absolutely nobody fish comes here to fish for these largemouth bass. And an average, uh, the largest uh, bass last summer was six and a quarter pounds, 19 and a half inches. Beautiful fish and nobody's fishing for these fish at all. Downside of what we got going on today is it's blowing about 30 and uh, we're trying to hide from the wind and, and catch some of these bass, but they're definitely up in here and, and untouched. The rods needed for muskie fishing should be stout, 9 foot in the 9 to 10 weight class. This is needed for casting large wind resistant flies and for the sheer power of these fish. Large arbor reels are best as they allow you to pick up line fast. A smooth drag is needed to tire out the muskie as soon as possible. There were three lines we used on this trip. First was a full floating line when using surface flies. In shallow water, clear intermediate line is what we used. 
but for the most part, a full sinking line is what we use as it keeps the fly at a constant depth for a longer period of time. What we're doing is we're running and gunning again tonight. Uh, we're looking for active fish. They had interest, but they weren't aggressive. So your best recommendation is to keep moving? Keep moving. We fished all morning long, saw only one good fish. The water was so cold. This is late afternoon, now evening, and the water's warmed up to almost 70 degrees right now, and they're, they're, they're roaming around a little bit. Not aggressive, but they're roaming around. But the fish you just saw was the real deal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if I hook that thing. So we're going to go hit another shoal or something like that? Yes, to, sir. To keep, and we're just going to go boom, 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 looking for those fish. That's right. Okay, let's go. Very good. I was stripping in fast because I made a bad cast. He hit it. Yes, it is. They do have an attitude. Yeah. Little ones and big ones. The colors. Beautiful iridescent green here. We're going to get her back in the water. Wow. She's going to grow up big and mean. Nielsen's Lodge has 12 very comfortable, ultra-clean cabins with full linens. A beautiful log lodge and dining room provides excellent food served twice a day. You're provided a lunchbox to take with you on your fishing adventure. There's only one way into the lodge, and that's by plane. Lodge owner Don Persh encourages anglers to introduce their children to the great sport of fishing by allowing them one child under 16 per family to visit for free. I would definitely recommend Nielsen to anybody who enjoys fishing and who enjoys being in a secluded area and if, especially if they're an uh, avid muskie hunter, uh, I would definitely, uh, without hesitation, recommend Nielsen's. There he's a big, big fish, big, big fish. He just turned, saw the boat. Yeah, she she's right there. Big, big fish. <laughs> well, I gotta tell you folks, uh, I just saw the biggest muskie of my life. Uh, we got a little bit on camera. We didn't get the fish, unfortunately, on camera. This thing was probably 50, 52 inches maybe, but it wasn't the length. It was just huge. I, he turned away from the boat. It was just over there in the weeds and I got a good look at him, and, and I know, Don, you just saying how excited you are that I finally saw a, a, one of the true monsters here. I mean, this thing was huge. This was 45 pounds. It was a monster pike, or a muskie. And uh, I'm not showing it, but my hands, I mean, I just, I didn't freeze, but I was just like, oh my goodness. Unfortunately, it turned away. It's kind of the mood of the muskie right now. They're, they're very lethargic. They're just four or five feet behind the fly. I mean, this is common though, isn't it, Don? It's real common, and especially these big fish like this, in this lake that we're in right now, it's very small. There's a lot of food and they can eat whatever they want to eat, whenever they want to eat it. And I'm just really excited to hear you say that finally you got to see why we're here and why you're here, you know, because they are truly giants here. She's gonna eat it. She's gonna eat it. Keep it out in front of her. Big corners. Oh my God, faster. She's still there. Told you it'd be one there. That was a monster. Well, I'm not sure if the camera got that, but that was what, a 45 to 50 inch Musky? I'd, I'd say 48, yeah. She's a four-footer. Musky one, Colin zero. 
once again, you, went, uh, you said I did everything right, and I was doing the oval, and she was right behind it, and she just didn't eat. She Fo just following you three inches behind it all the way, and just didn't open her mouth. I'm so addicted to this. Hang in there. <laughs> <laughs> I must have, you must have heard me speaking. <laughs> it's actually a pretty good pike. <laughs> right at the boat is typical with pike. <sighs> Look how he's making this 10 weight bend. I think we've got about five pounds, six pounds of pike and about six pounds of weed. Equal proportions. What do you think, Don? Yeah. Okay. Nice pike. Get him back in the water. Well, I gotta tell you, the last few days have been really great. I learned a lot about musky fishing and musky fly fishing. Don's an incredibly knowledgeable person. Rowan Lake is internationally known as one of the top lakes for muskie. And you know something? I only got a 21 inch here this week. And you know, that's reality. I mean, that's the way it happens in fishing. Sometimes you get the big fish, sometimes you don't. But let's put perspective into it. Last week, in seven days, they got 52 fish here. 52 big muskies. This week, they got six. That's fishing. The cold fronts really shut them down. I hope you enjoyed today's show. You learned a lot about muskie fishing, and if you want to learn more about our show or the series, go to our website at www.thenewflyfisher.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Algoma Kinawabi Travel Association, Ontario Tourism, Islander Precision Reels, and Orvis Sporting Traditions.